Hi there, in this video we'll be looking at how to create this tab-based UI with Flutter. It's quite simple, it uses something called the indexed stack. If we have a click around, we can see we have the home, shop and search tabs. If inside of one of the tabs we navigate away to another page, it will of course remove the tabs and will have its own navigation stack. As always, there is a text version of this video over at developer.school for you to check out in your own time. We're going to create a new project inside of the terminal by saying flutter create and then the name of our project. Maybe this will be a shopping app of some description. So this might be called flutter shopping. After that, we can CD into flutter shopping and open this up inside of our editor, just like so. Now that we have a brand new flutter application, we're going to create the pages i.e. the tab pages that we want to show. That'll be inside a presentation folder of some sorts. We might split this by feature. For example, if we had a shop feature, a home feature, and perhaps a search feature, each one of them might have their own folders. And inside of that, we'd have a pages, widgets, and other things related to presentation. So let's go through and make a search page, a home page, and a shop page just like this. I'm going to copy paste in the code from the article. It's really simple. It's just literally a stateless widget and that stateless widget has some text. Such as an app bar with a title and a centered body. We also have a link to the route. This just makes it easier to route to this page in the future if we needed to do that. So we'll go through and do the other pages. And finally, the same for shop. The only difference is that the shop page is going to have a link to this product detail page. So we will need to go make another folder outside of that. This one could be the product detail feature. As a result, we'd have a product underscore detail. And we'd put in our product detail page, which once again is simply a widget. I'm also going to put the other items inside of a pages folder because I just did it in the root. So I'm going to change that up. If we then head back over to our shop page, we can import that product detail page that we created earlier on. And now we have the very basis for the pages that we want to present inside of this app. For example, we could go to main.dart now and remove my homepage and replace that with the homepage we created. And we'd see hello home. But still, we have no way to make these tabs at this point. So this calls for a tab page. Inside a presentation, I'm going to make a tabs folder with the pages of tab underscore page dot dot. Now our tab page is going to be a little different. So we'll start off with a stateful widget this time. This one will be a tabs page. We will need to import material. And like the others, we will be returning a scaffold with the body this time of an indexed stack. So the indexed stack allows us to render essentially a stack of pages, but only one at a time. So you can think of the thing that will be on top of the entire stack will be the current index where we could have a list of children and those would be our various different pages. If that doesn't make sense at this point, don't worry. We're going to investigate that as we move on. So we'll have a current index of zero. We'll set our stack to have the index set to that current index of nothing. And now we need a list of children to add to the stack. So inside of this tabs folder, we can create a models folder. Now this isn't going to be used by our domain infrastructure or anything like that. It's just for our tabs page. It's a presentation model at this point. So we'll make a tab navigation item dot dot. It's simply used just to make it easier for us to generate these tabs. And to be honest, we could even put it in the same page as the tabs page if we wanted to. So we have a tab navigation item. And if we think of the things that are important to our tab, it would be something like a widget, which is the page. We'd also have a widget, which is the title. That could be the text. We could change this to string if we just wanted to pass in a string. We also need an icon for each tab. We can then generate a constructor for this field by hitting command dot or control dot. We'll make these named parameters just like that. And we'll also make them required. We'll need to import something like we'll need to import foundation dot dot, but we could replace that for widgets dot dot or material dot dot because we are using the widget and icon class. 
So let's add the required annotation to each one of these items on this model. We could even make a list of tab navigation item called items. That would simply return us the pages that we expect to display inside of our app. I'm going to move this back to being a widget for now. And for our items, we can simply paste in the array from the article. Or you can simply type this out yourself. You will need to import each one of the pages like so. And we will also make this static. Now inside of our tab page, we can add a children to the stack. And inside of the children, we can do a for loop where we say final tab item in our tab navigation item dot items. And here we want to return the tab item dot page. What this is going to do is it's going to add each one of our children pages that we've added to the stack and give us the ability to display that page. So if we went over to main dot dot and we removed home page and instead we put tabs page, we're going to get the same result for now because it's zero in the stack. But if we put one, we can then see we have this navigate to product detail page and the same would go for if we put two. That would give us hello search. I'm going to put this back to zero for now. And what we need to now do is give the user the ability to change this current index. Now, the way that we do that is by adding a bottom navigation bar. Our bottom navigation bar is simply just going to have a current index, which represents the selected index. And that's going to be the current index that we use for our index stack. Then we're going to have a list of items. Once again, we can have a for loop where we have a tab item inside of the tab navigation items, just like before. But this time we're going to display a bottom navigation bar item. That's going to have an icon where we have the tab item dot icon and the title of the tab item dot title. You'll see that the second we save this, we now have the three tab items like before. And the user can select each one of these tab items, but nothing changes at this point. And that's because although we've rendered these tab items, these bottom navigation bar items, we should say, there is no on tap event yet. So we need to make the on tap event, which returns us the index that the user has selected. Then we simply want to set the state of the current tab index equal to the index the user has selected. So once we save that, we should now be able to select an item and it will change the tab like so. We can then, if we want to select navigate to the product detail page, that will take us to that product detail page. And if we go back, we're back to this tabs page. So that's one way we can use the indexed stack with the bottom navigation bar to create this tab effect inside of our Flutter applications. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to use the indexed stack to create a bottom navigation bar. I'll see you soon in my next video.